Okay, welcome back. Let's look at how we can begin to find the Fourier representation of some signals. And we're going to start with continuous time signals, and we're going to start also with periodic signals. And later in the course, we'll consider discrete time signals and aperiodic signals, signals that do not repeat. But for right now, those two properties should hold, and we're only looking at those two properties. All right. So, given a signal that repeats then and is continuous, like this one, x of t, all right, we'll say that the, um, the fundamental period is t0. Can I find all of the constituents, the, the sinusoids, that go into making this up? So, for example, um, you know, can I, I want to be able to add maybe this one with this one with this one. And so when they add together, they make x of t. I need to figure out that representation. So this is what Fourier pondered. And a good start is to say the following. So this is time. Maybe um, my signal, since it repeats every t0 seconds, maybe I should start by considering all of the sinusoids that repeat every t0 seconds. So for example, there's this one, right? But there's also this, this one, go, the red one goes through one cycle in t0 seconds. There's also this one. The green one goes through two cycles in t0 seconds. And there's also this one. Uh, that was a bad drawing. Let me try that again. One, two, three. Three cycles in t0 seconds. And we don't have to stop there. Um, we can go four, five, six, whatever. So we don't know how many. So one of the things we're going to have to figure out is how many. Or we're going to have to address that. How many sinusoids? How many ingredients, that is, makes up my original signal? Okay, now, also remember that these sinusoids can be expressed as e to the j times some number, like omega zero t. Okay, this is a complex exponential and it is a periodic, it's a sinusoidal complex exponential. And we can have some sort of amplitude out here too. So each one of these curves that I drew here, the red, the blue, the green, can be represented in this way. I have to pick the frequency, right? Each one has a different frequency. And I have to pick the amplitude, each one has a different amplitude. All right. So I have to figure out not only how many of these things, but what are these frequencies and what are these amplitudes? Frequencies, amplitudes. This seems like a monumentous task. Amplitudes, right? And also, are they all in phase with one another? I have to figure out the phases of these things. If all, all of these that I drew go through zero, zero, but my, my original signal does not go through zero, zero. So, you know, these things might be out of phase with one another and they, they constructively and destructively interfere. So I have to consider that as well. Okay, let's start to address the frequency first. So Fourier said that if my original signal repeats every t0 seconds, then I should consider waves, sinusoids, that repeat every t0 seconds. That, that, that's what I have drawn here. That makes sense, right? If, they, if all of the constituents repeat after t0 seconds, then when I add them up, you know, the sum will repeat every t0 seconds. Okay, that makes sense. So notice, since the red wave goes through one cycle every t0 seconds, Actually, let me back up. The black, let me go to the black over here. This thing repeats every t0 seconds. It has a fundamental frequency 2 pi over t0, right? All right, now let's go to the red wave. The red wave goes through one cycle every t0 seconds, so it has a frequency that's the same, 2 pi over t0. But look at the, uh, the green guy. It goes through two cycles in t0 seconds, meaning its period is half, meaning its frequency is twice. 
and also the blue one has a frequency of 3 omega 0. So if we impose the constraint that they all repeat the same amount, then they all are, have integer related frequencies. And they could be negative, like I could have drawn the red wave like this. That would be minus omega 0. Okay, when frequencies are related by integers like this, we call this harmonically related. Harmonically related. So you will hear me say the word harmonic quite a bit in this course moving forward. So omega zero, we would call the first harmonic. Minus omega zero, we would call the minus first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and so on. All right, so that's kind of the, those are the frequencies we're going to consider. So now our problem boils down to, okay, I might have an A0 times E to the J times zero omega. This would be the A, uh, A0 or the integer zero harmonic, the zeroth harmonic is what I'm trying to get at. And then we might have A1, right, some different amplitude, E, to the j times 1, I'm not even going to put the 1 there, omega 0 t, plus some amount of the second harmonic, j2 omega 0 t, plus some amount of the third harmonic, right? And we don't know. We don't know how many of these, so we just keep going. And similarly over here, we can have minus harmonics, so we can have a minus 1 e to the minus j omega zero t and we can go this way so the minus second harmonic the minus third harmonic and so forth so the goal now we've kind of reformulated this is to write our signal x of t as an infinite sum so this is kind of it's it's addressing how many but we don't know yet so we're going to say minus infinity to infinity so that we can cover all of our bases. And then we're going to find out how much, right? That's the amplitude. The AK is the amount of the kth harmonic. E to the J K omega zero T. Okay, so we've, we've covered the frequencies, the harmonic related, how many we're covering all of our bases by going from minus infinity to infinity. The amplitudes are the AKs, how much of each ingredient, right? The sinusoids are the ingredients, and the amplitudes are how much of the ingredients. The phase, we're going to allow AKs to be complex. And if they're complex, then they have a magnitude, that's how much, and they have a phase, that's the phase of the kth harmonic. So, so the complex number there in AK is going to keep track of the phase of all of these sinusoids that, so that when we add them together, they may constructively or de destructively interfere. So this is how we're representing our signal. We need to figure out, we, we already talked about the frequency, right? Given the signal that repeats, the frequency is omega zero, and then we're gonna consider twice that, three times that, harmonic related frequencies but we need to figure out the AKs now we need to figure th those out and that's the Fourier series representation and we call this equation the synthesis equation given given the recipe like if we had the AKs and we had the omega zero then we would add all these together and synthesize back X of T all right, so the problem now is how are we going to find those AKs, right? That's the issue. All right, so I'll just write it out here again. X of T is K equals minus infinity to infinity of AK e to the J K omega zero T. So given x of t, how do we find ak's? Well, there's a trick to this, okay? And I'm going to show you the trick, and it's okay if you don't, you know, watch it and understand it, but if you don't remember it, that's fine. 
So I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the minus j n, where n is an integer, omega 0 t. So both sides of that. So because it does not have any k's in it, I can bring that inside the summation. like this. All right, and then what I'm going to do is integrate both sides over one full period. So I'll write that as this, one full period, meaning um, uh, notation-wise I'm just going to write t0. So that means one full period, both sides. And with the sum, the integral of a sum of things is the sum of the integral of things. So I can bring the integral in. And I can use properties of exponents to combine uh, those exponents, e to the j times k minus n omega 0 t dt. All right. Now, we want to evaluate this integral, and I want to show you two cases. When k is equal to n, we're going to get something, and when k is not equal to n, we're going to get something else. So first, when k equals n, then I have e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is 1. Integrated over a length of time t0 gives me t0. When k does not equal n, then I have an integer multiple of frequency. So I have something like this, where here's t0, right? And when I, when I integrate that, integer, integer number of cycles, right, the area, positive area, negative area, when I integrate something that's uh, sinusoidal over an integer number of cycles, the positive area cancels with the negative area and I'm left with zero. Okay, and so now, really, there's only one, even though this is a infinite sum, there's only one k that is non-zero. That's when k is equal to n. So that's the only term that contributes to this sum. So that picks out the a n value, and then that integral is equal to t zero. Now, I'll, since I was after the a values, a n, you know, I'll solve, I'll look at the left over here, and then the right over here, and I'll solve that for a n. Okay, so I have this, and it doesn't matter if I call it the index n or k, um, it's usually written with k's, so I'll switch back to k's, and the fundamental period is just dropped usually, so we, we just drop the zero, and, and it's taken to mean, yeah, t is the fundamental period now. So I'm just going to switch to that notation. Like this. And I'm going to refer to that as the analysis equation. Given x of t, how we can how can we analyze it to find its constituents, right? Its recipe. Given a cookie, how do I analyze it to find the ingredients of the cookie? Then this one, remember, was the synthesis. This is like doing the baking. Given the ingredients, how can, how do I make the cookie, right? So they're they're complements or they're they're inverses of one another. Now, I do want to point out to you a special uh, value of k, when k is equal to zero in the analysis equation, we have a, a special interpretation. So when k equals zero, we have one over t, the integral of t x of t, dt. You see, because e to the zero is one, I'm missing a dt here. e to the zero is one. So if we, if we integrate a, a, a signal over a length of time and then divide by that length of time, 
that gives us the average value over that length of time. That's that's fundamental, you know, that's that's calc one right there. Maybe calc two. If x of t is periodic then, which it is in our case, then this gives us the average value of the entire signal. Because if, if this is the average value over one period and it repeats, then this is the average uh, this is the average value over over the entire length of time. So that's the interpretation of A0, the average value. All right, so now, now that we've looked at how we can get the recipe, let's see, or let's take some concrete examples given a periodic signal, let's decompose it into its Fourier series representation.